welcome back to the channel say what's real tv this review is for tyler perry's sisters season six episode 17 a taste of freedom So we open up the episode where we left off with Preston walking up on Danny and Tony and it looked like Danny's heart just stopped, dropped and rolled. She didn't know what to do. So of course she played it off asking him what he's doing there. And he says some old random statement talking about, oh, I was going to surprise you and put something in your new car. And I'm like, say what? I'm like, what are you talking about, Preston? Just say what it is. I wanted to see if you was lying. That's what he should have said. And I feel like the only thing he should have been trying to leave in her car was probably her house key, but whatever. Him and Tony, they end up introducing themselves to each other and Tony is trying to leave, but Preston keeps saying, no, no, stay, hold up, wait a minute. So he asks him, how long has he known Danny? He says that they work together. Danny over there trying to get him to stop talking and he say, oh, but y'all two were together last night. So once again, she trying to play it off and he's like, no, I heard the conversation. She said, how long were you standing there? He said, long enough. And uh, Tony is like, I think I'll stay here. And he was like, um, why are you still here? He said, because you told me to stay. He was like, oh, well, I think you should leave. Uh, so they go back and forth with that. So Tony tells Danny that he'll wait over there to the side so he can see her. So when he walks off, Preston's like, oh, so he can see you, huh? So he says that the two of them need to talk and that he'll come back on her lunch break. And Danny says, no, I told you about doing that on my job. Like, I really got to go inside. And he told her, look, you never wanted to be to work this early. And she was like, well, today I do. And he was like, well, all right. And he finally walks off. So do you guys think that Preston will still be playing Boo Boo the Fool waiting for Danny to get home or will he be gone when she finally makes it there? So we go over there to the law firm and we got Maurice, Andy, and Sabrina. They're still in the conference room celebrating the fact that the case has been dismissed. So Maurice, he actually thanks Andy and tells her if there's anything that he can ever do for her, you know, basically give him a call. Now, even though we know Maurice be Maurice and and being annoying and all of that, I did not like Andy's response to him when she said, what could you possibly do for me? As if to say he's so beneath her like he could never in life do anything to help her. You know what I'm saying? And see, that's the thing with Andy. She always looks down on people and like she's sitting on this high horse and nobody can be on her level ever. Like just because you up today, Andy, you could be down tomorrow. What goes up can come down and you never know who you might need on the way down. So just because he's not on your level today and, you know, can... And it doesn't even have to be anything financial. So you don't know what he can help you with. But Maurice does clap back and tell her he can help her with all her fashions and reads her basically from head to toe. So Sabrina and Andy, they're talking about having a good time later on. And Sabrina asks her about going to Jordan's house and has he called her? And she says no. And you could tell she gets in her feelings a little bit. And she asks Sabrina about Rich. Sabrina says she hasn't heard from him, but let her check her phone. So she looked and realized that Rich did text her and sent her a picture. So you can see the look envy all over Andy's face. And that's that elitist attitude I feel she's given. Like, I'm over here all that in the bag of chips. I'm the shit. And I'm not getting a phone call or a text, but Sabrina is. So she half-heartedly tells Sabrina that that was sweet and this and that. Really not feeling it. It was fake and phony to me. But Sabrina tries to reassure her that Jordan does like her. And she tried to act like it didn't matter to her. But my thing is, like I said last week, Andy, did you not have flowers waiting on you when you got to work this morning from Jordan? So if anything, why you didn't text Jordan and say good morning? Thank you for the flowers. They were beautiful. They were nice. That was sweet of you. How come you couldn't have done that? It's 2023. People complain all the time. Men don't call. They text now. You didn't get a text. You got flowers. So girl, you're going to see the man later on. Why are we doing this? Why are we wasting a whole episode with you feeling like you the queen of Sheba? Like somebody got to wake up and just automatically call you. Girl, no. So then we see Fatima and Zach talking to the family law attorney, Wesley. Not sure what happened to the black guy that they had that was chucking it up all over the place. That was actually the one flirting with Fatima, but 
we got somebody new. So Wesley, he's telling Zach that, look, you know, since you just found out that you're Michael's father, I'd advise you not to go back over there to Heather's house. Zach is trying to tell him, you know, you don't understand. And Wesley was like, look, I've been doing family law for a long time. You'll be surprised what I've seen doing this. And he's telling him like, look, you need to be patient and I'll get you guys an emergency hearing. But he did let them know, look, there has been no reports on record showing that anybody has reported any abuse. And Fatima was like, you know, but we do have a witness. And he says, well, we better hope that she talks. So Wesley tells him he's going to start working on the case right away that morning and that Fatima owed him. So Wesley was like, he'll get back with them. And as they're leaving, they get outside the office and Zach asks Fatima, like, why do you owe him? Like, I saw how he was looking at you. And Fatima had to let Zach know he was not looking at me. He was looking at my earrings, basically saying that the man doesn't like women like that. And I'm like, first of all, I didn't see nowhere in the conversation where he was flirting with Fatima. So... They really just have these characters saying anything now just to fill the scene up. So after all of that, Zach is getting ready to leave when Hayden walks up and asks them to hold on. He wanted to introduce them to his wife and tells Fatima, I think you might know her. So it's like, oh, Lord, they're getting ready to spill the beans. But he introduces her and it never comes up how she may have known her. So Zach, he pretty much clowns. Hayden the whole time and they looking at the ring and saying itty bitty ring just saying all kind of stuff messing with Hayden <laughs> making him feel like a fool and was basically telling him like you know they deserve each other and he's glad that he has her but so that way he can leave them alone and Tamara was like well what is that supposed to mean and Hayden was like don't worry about it don't worry about it Zach carried on so long I thought he was gonna end up telling on Fatima but Fatima was like, it's time to go, gritting her teeth. So they finally end up leaving and he calling them Tweedledee and Tweedledum and tells Fatima once again, don't feel no kind of way about setting them up. So we get a scene where Sabrina calls Danny and she's extra excited, giving her the good news about the charges being dropped and how she might be getting her job back. So Danny is happy for her, but you could tell in her voice that something is not right. So Sabrina is like, what's going on? What's up with you? So she tells Sabrina that Preston came to the job and caught her talking to Tony and got really jealous. And I'm like, did he get really jealous or did he just ask questions that needed to be asked for a girlfriend who's sneaking and creeping all over the place, leaving the house two hours ahead of her shift? What was really jealous about that? So she says her and Preston are trying to work it out and she felt some kind of way because she feels like once she committed to Preston, here comes this so-called perfect guy in Tony. And Sabrina had to tell her, look, you don't know if he's perfect or not. And she's like, oh, well, I don't know if I'm going to find out because I'm with Preston trying to convince herself that she's really with Preston. Girl, you want to see what's up with Tony so bad, it's killing you. So Sabrina told her to talk to Preston. She said that she will after this date tonight so she hurries off the phone with sabrina because now tony is coming up to the counter so he comes up wanting to know what happened outside with preston and she deflects like you say his name like you know him or something so he says that he was a bit surprised and you know kind of shocked that she would be dating him like it took him by surprise and i'm like well if you sit outside and listen to her phone calls because she talks so loud, you would already know that Preston was white because that was an issue she would have discussed over the phone because we know that that was a problem for her before. Now, if you know about the booty liquor, you should know that Preston was white. So he tells her that she didn't seem like the type that would go that route because she seems like she's pro-black and I guess that made her feel some kind of way because she ended up trying to defend and explain why she was with Preston. And he tells her he didn't mean to offend her. She says she wasn't offended. And then he got all goofy and quirky like, oh, thank God. I'm like, oh, my God, he getting ready to be on my last nerves. He just comes off as one big goofy bugaboo like, uh-uh. He want to keep asking her all these questions about Preston and is she happy, this and that and the other, just still shooting the shot. And she's like, uh, well, who are you dating? He was like, you know, hopefully I'll be dating someone soon, all of this and that. So they bring up the whole uh, triple date thing. And Danny tells him that Jordan has yet to call 
Andy. I'm like, I'm so sick of that. I don't know what to do. And she's like, Andy says she's not going <laughs> if he don't call. So basically that means she wasn't going. So of course, Bugaboo wasn't having that. And it was like, oh no, I'm on it. I'm going to make sure he calls her because, you know, y'all need to be there because of course he want to see Danny. So now he got now he got to call Jordan. So Tony need to realize since he want this so bad with Danny, the same way you get him is how you lose him. So if she's willing to cheat on Preston with you, what do you think she's going to do to you when you finally get him? So we go over there to the firm and Fatima goes in there to talk to Andy real quick before she leaves. And they talk about Wesley, you know, getting an emergency hearing for Michael. And she's telling her that she doesn't think Michael is going to make it, but she doesn't know how to tell Zach. So Andy's phone rings and she hits ignore and Fatima was like, well, who was that? She tells her that it was Jordan, the guy she had to date with the night before. So he calls right back. Fatima answers the phone and put it on speakerphone and makes Andy talk to him. And she's playing like she doesn't know who he is, like she can't remember. And now she's joking and just being childish as hell, if you ask me. So he's like, oh, uh, I can't wait to see you tonight. And she tells him that since you didn't call me all day, I went ahead and made other plans. Like, I don't know why she's doing all of that. But he tells her that basically he's intimidated by her. He doesn't want to be disappointed. So Fatima, she interjects and cancels Andy's imaginary plans and makes her available for Jordan again. So they agree to meet up later on that night and they end up hanging up. But why didn't Andy thank Jordan for the flowers? Did he send the flowers or did somebody else send the flowers? Because it wasn't mentioned at all. So Fatima, she tells Andy not to play games with Jordan. Like, you know, he really doesn't have any game. And she says that it feels kind of weird not to play any game. She likes to chase. She likes to play hard to get. So for some reason, Andy decided to bring up a conversation that we've already had before. And she asked Fatima, is she okay with dealing with Zach's drama? And Fatima says, what do you mean? Like all of this was before me. And then Fatima shocks the hell out of me because she says that uh, she's willing to go through hell with Zach and his drama. And it's better than her sitting at home being lonely. So at this point, I'm extremely annoyed because now Fatima is saying she'd rather have a piece of a man than no man at all. Now, anybody that has been watching this know that that is not in Fatima's character to sit and say she don't want to be sitting home alone like she can't get a man like girl be by yourself have a peace of mind like where where is all this coming from we stay because of that very reason and I mean that's not a good enough reason to stay now after listening to Mrs. Porter's story she was singing a whole different tune so what changed so Andy was like well go Zach Fatima tells her just how much she loves him and how they've been through a whole lot in a short amount of time. So she basically is going to stick beside him. So Andy feels like he has a ride or die. So moving on from that, uh, we go over there to Sabrina's house and apparently Bio called her because he was like, thank you for seeing me. But we never did find out what he actually came over there for because Sabrina was like, did you get your money back? He said no. So she tells him all about the charges being dropped. So he feels like, well, it's time to celebrate. So he's asking her out and she's telling him no, no, no. And she tells him, look, you know, thank you for helping me. Everything you've done or whatever, but I don't like how you treated my friend. So Bayo, he ended up getting mad, calling her a trifling B, called her a user, saying that just because he got money, that don't give her the right to be using him like that. So she got up, get ready to let him out. He told her, don't call him no more. And she said, I won't. He was hotter than fish. Grease called her a bee. And Danny was walking up to the door at the time and was like, whoa, whoa, who a bee? So his whole little attitude kind of shifted a little bit when he saw Danny. And she told him something about his juggler and that the turtleneck wasn't going to save him. And he going to point at Sabrina telling her she going to get hers. And Danny said, yeah, but it'll be for somebody that's taller than 5'4". So he going to stand on his tiptoes and <laughs> I'm like, they should have beat his behind down. So after Bio leaves, Sabrina tells Danny real quick kind of what happened with Bio, but not really in detail. Say she'll tell her later. So Danny was like, look, girl, we need to celebrate. You're off. You're free. We need to drink. Before we get to Jordan's house, like, let, we got to do this. So she pulls out a little miniature. She only had one in her purse. 
and basically was like, girl, I need to get some out your closet because she don't want to go home to face Preston because she still says that that man came there to her job and was acting crazy and jealous. I still didn't see it myself. I thought he was meek and mild. I thought he was a little too soft myself. So we go over there to Zach's and Karen is putting a box in front of Zach's door. And as she's walking away, Zach is coming out of the door to take the trash out. So of course he sees her. They start talking. And, you know, she's saying that she dropped off some more stuff for Michael. So she asks him how he's doing and he tells her about the whole situation with Heather taking Michael back. And now he has to go to court to try to, you know, see him again or whatever, yada, yada, yada. So some kind of way they got on the fact that Karen felt like Zach cheated on her with Heather when she got pregnant. And Zach had to let her know that out of the three years, they were on again, off again a lot. And that was one of their off times. At this point, it really don't even matter. So I don't even know why we having the conversation, to be honest. Karen says that she is tired of being stressed out and she is in a let go, let God type of space. Zach laughs and says, oh, the preacher getting to you. So she says that it's over and she's just focusing on her baby and herself. And Zach was like, oh, good for you. So Karen threw out there, we'll work on visitation. And Zach was like, cool, like, hey, not a problem. So we go back over there to Sabrina's house and Andy is bamming on the door like the police. So Danny, she lets her in. That blue that uh, Andy got on was really nice. I like uh, Sabrina's outfit as well. But Andy comes in and automatically gets the clowning on Danny and her pink pumps with her matching purse and was like, girl, you can't wear that. So they all go back and forth about the outfit, like what's wrong with it? You need to change. Danny was not paying Andy any attention and the three of them headed to Jordan's house. So Fatima, she gets home and Zach is in there cooking and she was like, well, it smells good. Did Karen cook it? He's looking at her all crazy and she was like, oh, I saw her leave. And he said, oh, what you thought I wasn't going to tell you? And I'm like, well, hell, she didn't give you a chance because she automatically blurted out that she saw her. So apparently she wasn't trying to trick you into telling nothing. So he tells her that Karen brought some more stuff over for Michael. And they just chalked it up to her being nice and going through whatever because of the whole pregnancy thing. So they started talking about Wesley, the family law attorney. They haven't heard anything, but he's supposed to be getting the emergency hearing together. But Fatima was like, you know, do you want to go over there and get him? And Zach was like, you know, look, you're going to either play good cop or bad cop. Like, what? why would we do that? It's going to make it worse. Like, you know, the judge is going to say we kidnapped him. Fatima was like, oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. So Zach says if he doesn't get a court date by this weekend, they riding over there to get him. So the ladies, they make it over there to Jordan's and... The guys, they greet them at the door. They're admiring their looks, telling them how beautiful they are. They like what they have on. And the ladies, they're looking around. They're admiring Jordan's decor. They seem to be a bit impressed by that. As they're walking along, the guys walk them out to the back patio area. Tony's back there on the grill, getting acquainted or whatever. So, so Jordan all of a sudden grabs Andy's hand and takes her over to a the other side of the patio and introduces her to none other than <laughs> Scary Gary. And the episode ended there. Ooh, child, that doggone Gary is a hot behind mess. But guess what? Andy is going to stick beside him. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Anyway, drop down in the comments. Let me know what you guys thought of this week's episode. As always, you guys, thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.